Today, I would like to fondly remember our late President, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who himself was a teacher and his words on a teacher and a student. A teacher has got a fantastic opportunity to grow minds, to enrich the minds and to give dreams to the young people and nurture the dreams with them and they will become great human beings. Pledge of a student. Speak five lines to yourself every morning. I am the best. I can do it. God is always with me. I am a winner. Today is my day. Good morning, dear children. Today, our class is based on revisiting irrational numbers. The first class which we did gave you an idea or a basic idea of irrational numbers as numbers which are non-terminating and non recurring The numbers or decimals which are non-terminating and non-recurring are called as irrational numbers. The example of the value of pi as 22 by 7 as 3.141 etc. The value of square root of 2 by the long division method of square roots of finding square roots as 1.41 etc. The value of root 3, 1.73 etc. are examples of irrational numbers which you have already learned in class 9. Today's topic is how to prove root 2, root 3 etc are irrational by using the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Let us prove root 2 is irrational by using fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Prove that root 2 is irrational. We will be proving by a method called contradiction method. We will be assuming that root 2 is rational. We arrive at a conclusion which does not match with the properties of a rational number. Thus, our supposition will go wrong and we have to accept that root 2 is irrational. This is the procedure for proving root 2 is irrational. What are rational numbers? Rational numbers are numbers which can be expressed of the form P by Q where P and Q are integers, Q not equal to 0 and P and Q do not have any common factor or P and Q are co-prime. So let us suppose that root 2 is rational. Applying the condition of rational numbers, therefore, root 2 can be written as P by Q, where P and Q are integers, Q not equal to 0, and the property P and Q do not have common factors, it is the same as P and Q are co-prime. Co-prime is the definition of two numbers which do not have any common factor. Squaring on both sides root 2 the whole square is the same as p by q the whole square 2 is equal to p square by q square or by cross multiplication p square is equal to 2 times q square. This statement we can read as two ways. P square is divisible by 2 or 
2 divides p square. The number 2 divides p square. That is any value of p we take. 2 divides p square. Let me take the example as p as 10. The concept of 2 divides p square is the same as 2 divides p square is 10 square. 2 divides 100 or 100 is equal to 2 into 50. That is the logic of 2 divides p square. From this, we can derive 2 divides p also. Now see here, the value of p you have assumed is 10. By applying this logic, 2 divides p, that is 2 divides 10, 10 is the same as 2 into 5. Therefore, P can be written as 2 times R. It's a multiple of another number R. P square is equal to 2R, two the whole square. P square is equal to 4R square. Equation number 2. Equation number 1 says that P square is equal to 2 times Q square. Equation number 2 says that P square is equal to 4 times R square. By equating 1 and 2, you derive at 2Q square is equal to 4R square. Q square is equal to 2 times R square. Again, if you give a meaning the same way, 2 divides Q square, 2 divides Q also. That means the same number 2 divides P also, it divides Q also, which shows that 2 is a common factor for both P and Q. But what is the condition about a rational number? The third condition is always saying that P and Q should be co-prime. Here we got a factor that 2 is becoming a common factor for both P and Q. This is a contradiction. To the fact that P and Q are co-prime. That means we arrive at a contradiction for the one of the fact, one of the properties of a rational number. Thus, our supposition is wrong. Hence, root 2 is irrational. This question can be a three mark question even for the terminal examinations. It's a very important property regarding root 2 is irrational by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Let me explain one more with root 5 or root 7 or root 3 so that you can complete the remaining exercise questions of a similar ones by yourself. Let's prove. Prove that root 11 is irrational. Proceeding the same way. Let us suppose that root 11 is rational. That is, root 11 can be expressed of the form p by q where p and q are integers q not equal to 0 and 
पी एल क्यू और को प्राइम स्क्वेरिंग ऑन बोथ साइड रूट लेवन द होल स्क्वेर इज इक्वल टू पी स्क्वेर बाय क्यू स्क्वेर इलेवन इज इक्वल टू पी स्क्वेर बाय क्यू स्क्वेर और पी स्क्वेर इज इक्वल टू इलेवन क्यू स्क्वेर इलेवन डिवाइड्स पी स्क्वेर विच शोज दैट इलेवन डिवाइड्स पी ऑल्सो टेक इट एस पी ऑल्सो लेट P is equal to eleven R. Square on both sides. P square is equal to eleven R the whole square. P square is equal to one twenty one R square. Here you are getting P square is equal to eleven Q square. P square is equal to one twenty one R square. By equating one and two, eleven q square is equal to one twenty one r square. Eleven and one twenty one q square is equal to eleven r square. The same explanation. Eleven divides q square. Eleven divides q also. Here we got eleven divides p. Here you got eleven divides q. That is, p and q have a common factor eleven. This is a contradiction. This is a contradiction that p and q are co-prime. Hence, our supposition is wrong. Therefore, root eleven is irrational. The similar questions in the textbook you can complete as root five as irrational, root seven as irrational. The same procedure, the same proof can be done for all those numbers. the two properties you have learned in class 9 is the sum or difference of a rational number and an irrational number is always irrational the product or quotient of a non zero rational number with an irrational number is always irrational that means we are going to prove the sum or difference of a rational number and an irrational number is irrational the quotient or product of a non zero rational number with an irrational number is also irrational you can see here 5 is a rational number root 2 is an irrational number they are sum we are going to prove them as irrational rational minus irrational we are going to prove as irrational the product of a rational and an irrational number the quotient of a rational and irrational number we are going to prove as irrational number by using the same method these questions can be asked as two mark question textbook question number 1 number 2 Prove that three plus two root five is irrational. Three plus two root five is irrational. You can see here, three is a rational number. Root five is an irrational number. Two is a rational number, but it's a multiplication. We have to prove that three plus two root five is irrational. The method. as the same contradiction method let us suppose that 3 plus 2 root 5 is rational the same contradiction method therefore 3 plus 2 root 5 can be expressed 
in the form of p by q where p and q are integers q not equal to 0 and p and q are coprime here the next step we need not square the method is we have to separate the irrational factor from this sum or difference or product or quotient. That means the irrational factor root 5 has to be separated from this sum. 2 root 5 is the same as p by q minus 3. 2 root 5 is the same as by LCM p minus 3q or root 5 is separated as p minus 3q by 2q. You can see here the left hand side is purely an irrational number. Now for any value of p and q they are integers. P minus 3Q by 2Q will always give an integer value which is a rational number whereas root 5 is an irrational number. How do you give the remark which is a contradiction? An irrational number can never be equal to a rational number. Thus we arrive at a contradiction. Our supposition is wrong. Therefore, 3 plus 2 root 5 is irrational. How do you present it? For any value of P and Q, P minus 3Q by 2Q is a rational number. Since we have an equality symbol, which proves that root 5 is also rational, but it has been proved that root 5 is irrational. For any value of P and Q, P minus 3Q by 2Q is a rational number. Therefore, root 5 is also a rational number. This is a contradiction. To the fact that root 5 is irrational, therefore our supposition is wrong. Hence, 3 plus 2 root 5 is irrational. So any of these problems when you are given a sum or difference of a rational and an irrational number is given, you have to separate the irrational factor onto the left hand side and the other expression onto the right hand side. The conclusion you can always give as for any value of P and Q, the right hand side will take a rational number, the left hand side is an irrational number. An irrational number becoming a rational number is a contradictory statement to the fact that root two, that the number is irrational. Hence, we arrive at a contradiction. Our supposition will go wrong. Therefore, 3 plus 2 root 5 is irrational. With the product, prove that 7 root 5 is irrational. Or prove that 7 root 5 is irrational. It's a simple one, the product of a rational and an irrational number. So, let us suppose that 7 root 5 is rational. Therefore, 7 root 5 can be expressed in the form of P by Q, where P and Q are integers. Q not equal to 0 and P and Q are co-prime. Following the same pattern, no need of squaring on both sides, just only separate the irrational factor 
root 5 is the same as p by 7 q. The conclusion says for any value of p and q, p by 7 q is a rational number. You can also write in this way, but root 5 is an irrational number. Thus, we arrive at a contradiction. The contradiction here is, we arrive at a contradiction. The contradiction here is, an irrational number becoming equal to a rational number. The symbol used, we got it as equality. Thus, we arrive at a contradiction. Hence, our supposition is wrong. Therefore, 7 root 5 is irrational. This can be asked as a two mark question for any exam. Last topic in this lesson, revisiting rational numbers and their decimal expansion. Any rational number can be expressed as a terminating decimal or a non-terminating recurring decimal. Without long division, what is the rule to check whether a given rational number has a terminating decimal or a non-terminating decimal that is the topic applied in this particular exercise let me generally define let p by q be a rational number in the standard form in the standard form means p and q should be co prime they should not have a common factor let p by q be a rational number in the standard form then if the prime factors of q are of the form 2 raised to m, 5 raised to n, then the rational number p by q will have a terminating decimal. The second case, if p by q is a rational number in the standard form, the prime factors of q are not of the form 2 raised to m, 5 raised to n, then the decimal expansion will be non-terminating repeating. The example, with the example, the definition will be clear. Let's take the example of 17 by 8. Let 17 by 8 be a rational number. The first step is to check whether the rational number is in the standard form. Do they have any common factor? No. The prime factors of 8. 8 is the same as 2 cubed. Or it is the same as 2 cubed 5 to the power of 0. So applying the rule. The prime factors of 8. are of the form 2 raised to m, 5 raised to n. Therefore, 17 by 8 will have a terminating decimal. Terminating decimal. The second example, if you consider 29 by you take the number 29 by 343. 29 is a prime number. So they do not have a common factor. So let's find out what is the prime factorization of 343. 343 is divisible with 7. 7 fours are 28. 63. 7 nines are 63. 7 7s are 49. 343 is the same as 7 cubed. Can you find the factors 2 and 5 here? No. So how do you present it? 
the prime factors of 343 is not of the form 2 raised to m, 5 raised to n, therefore 29 by 343 represent a non-terminating recurring decimal. Non-terminating recurring decimal. Question number 8 in the textbook is very important as the third number you see here what I'm going to work out which needs careful working. The number 6 by 15. The rational number 6 by 15. If you consider this, what is the first step we discussed is the rational number should be in the standard form. If you directly find the factors of 15, you will get as 3 into 5 and you will conclude that 6 by 15 will have a non-terminating repeating. But what is the real answer? 6 by 15 can be reduced as 2 by 5 by cancelling the common factor 3. Now see the prime factor of 5. 5 can be written as 5 or it is the same as 2 raised to 0, 5 raised to n. The prime factors of 5 is of the form 2 raised to m, 5 raised to n. Therefore, 2 by 5 will have a terminating decimal. This topic can be asked as a one mark question, but the first condition that P by Q is co prime has to be highlighted or else you will get a different answer. So please be careful when you are working out P and Q should be co prime before working out the next steps. So in general the topics we discussed in this lesson the first topic is Euclid's division lemma. By using Euclid's division lemma how do you proceed with Euclid's division algorithm? The second property based on fundamental theorem of arithmetic which is used to find HCF and LCM by prime factorization and proving root square root of any number as irrational sum and difference of a rational and an irrational number is irrational product or quotient of a non-zero rational number with a rational number is irrational and the last topic as to find the decimal representation as terminating or non-terminating repeating by checking the prime factors of the denominator. You can see the summary in page number 18 of the textbook. I hope all students could benefit by the classes. Thank you and all the best.